Hey everybody and welcome back to Live in Life Tastic, the channel created with content about life, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the awesome. I'm Kim, let's get living. First, let me point out that I'm wearing a sweatshirt. My lovely hoodie, I am still sporting it. It is June 19th, where the rest of the country is getting all nice and warm for summer. It is a whopping 66 degrees at a high today, which won't even be for hours still. Happy sweatshirt day to you. At least it's kind of sunny. It was really cloudy and gross this morning. It's perfect, beautiful. Anyway, today I want to talk about journaling. I tell everybody there are two things everybody needs, a therapist and a journal. I know that there's a lot of people out there who feel very, very comfortable and have a really good support team, and that is fantastic. You should always have people to talk to. If you have all these wonderful people to talk to, why journal? There are a lot of things that are incredibly good about journaling. Journaling can clear your head. We all have stuff on our mind. There's stuff that we feel we can't tell other people or that maybe we shouldn't share with everybody. It should just be one of our things. This gives us an outlet where you can just write down all of your feelings and then you can choose to share them or not. Be honest. You can't always be honest about what you're feeling towards other people, whether it's too much emotion. Maybe you are crushing on somebody who's already in a relationship and it just wouldn't be the right idea to share that information. It could be that what you're going to say is going to be incredibly hurtful and you don't want to hurt somebody else's feelings or any other reason. There's just a lot of reasons. It just gives you a time to be honest with yourself, get those feelings out there, make the feelings known. It also gives you a time to reflect. Day to day we experience a lot of stuff and if you don't, I am sorry, you should probably get living. But everybody should be experiencing a lot. Uh, it's not always going to be great. It's not always going to be horrible. Like I say in the intro, good, bad, ugly, and awesome. You're going to feel emotions and all of that. So this gives you a time to reflect on that, to give you something to look back on and see like what you were really going through and how did you deal with it. It also is really good alone time. So frequently we forget about us. We spend so much time focused on everybody else that we forget to spend time on ourselves. Just taking a few moments for yourself, whether you have five minutes available or you have an hour, two hours all day available, it gives you a time to put your feelings out there. Really remind yourself how you're feeling. Really delve into your emotions and your feelings about the day. Another good reason to do it would be to document your legacy. Maybe you are really headed someplace in life everything's working out for you great and you're hitting those bumps in the road and you are hovering right over the top of them and you are just cruising right along and you're doing awesome and you want to share that with everybody or maybe you have hit so many hurdles in life that your legs are damn near broken but you just keep going right you want people to know all the bad things that you went through to get to that wonderful finish line in the end. Or maybe along the end you hit a lot of really great things and then you fell into a pit and then you had to get yourself back out of it. Whatever your situation is, it's um, awesome to be able to share those feelings with somebody else and to really let other people read about your life when you're no longer around living it. Journaling also helps reduce stress. Stress is a major factor in people's lives. In case you have never noticed, I have really great skin. Okay, maybe it's not really great to everybody, but most people they can't guess my age so I'm gonna say it's really great skin. And I attribute a lot of that to the fact that I keep stress very very low in my life. So do I stress? I absolutely stress. I rarely get angry. I rarely cry. I feel the emotions. I absolutely feel the emotions and I can cry and get angry on demand at any point. I have found so many different ways to deal with that stress. One way being journaling. Alone time. Anything to help get away from it. Music is a really good one for me as well but I'm really really a big supporter on journaling and using it as a method to just get feelings out. Instead of bottling them all up and just storing them and dwelling on them and letting them soak in their own juices, put them all out there, get rid of them. The one that people don't think about is that when you're journaling, it actually helps improve your memory. Writing down what you thought, what you were doing, things you experienced throughout the day, throughout the month, throughout the week, however often you journal. Some people journal every hour. Good on them. No thank you. But some people do. By doing that, you are creating a way for your brain to recollect. You can go back and you can read these things and reflect on them. It really helps keep those ties in your brain, which is an awesome thing. Another reason people should journal. The last reason, the most important reason in my mind, that it helps you stay organized. Journaling for a lot of people, they believe that it's just about sharing your emotions, sharing your feelings, writing it down. That's more like a diary. Yes, you put those emotions out there, you put those feelings out there, but it's more for keeping track of your life. It just helps you stay organized. I am such a huge supporter of this. I'm sure you can tell, but in case you can't, some of the benefits. As I've mentioned, it helps reduce stress hugely, which I'm sure you can understand. When people are trying to reduce stress, one of the things they do 
sometimes they go find somebody to talk to. Really vent it all out. Get it all out there. A journal can be that somebody that you are venting to. Let it be that somebody that you're venting to. Really put it all out there. Get it off of you. But before you start journaling, you have to consider how you're going to be using the journal. What's its purpose? What are you trying to achieve? Don't just jump right into it and just be like, I'm going to journal because you will flop. And I know that sounds kind of maybe harsh, but if you don't go into it understanding why you're going into it, if you don't have a why purpose, why would you do it? It really becomes one of those, oh my gosh, this is one more thing I have to do. One more thing I have to concentrate on. And that isn't something that anybody wants. That's actually adding stress to your life because now you feel obligated. Your why needs to be personal. It needs to be why are you personally going to do this thing? And then you go for it. Determine your primary goal, determine your why, and then start your journaling process. Journaling can be written, but it can also be art. Maybe you draw, maybe you paint, whatever your art style is. If you can put it on paper, that is journaling. As long as it wasn't like an assignment for school, that isn't journaling, that's homework. Even if it's doodling, that is still art. It's still something that's allowing you to express yourself and it actually does help with all of those benefits as well. Scrapbooking is another big one because it's so expressive. You are not only de-stressing, you are also helping with your memory by creating a book of memories, working on your organizational skill by putting all of those pictures and those thoughts and those trinkets all in one location together. Another type of journaling is prompt journaling. Prompt journaling would be you have a prompt for the day and that's what you write about. Maybe your prompt journaling actually is more musical. You go write me a song about flowers, trees, cats, graduation, falling in love, any of those types of things. Maybe it's writing about those things, whether it be musically or actually writing. Prompts are great for that. Another one is mind mapping. People don't ever think about mind mapping as a type of journaling, but it very much is. It's an organizational process and it helps reduce stress because it creates a plan for things that you plan to do. Creating a central idea, branching off into all the different directions. You're thinking about buying a car and then you spawn that out. Well, what does that mean? Method of payment, insurance, car repairs, gas. You branch it off into those and then you look at those and you say, well, is there more detail to those that I need to do? Mind mapping is incredibly good for people who are trying to use journaling as a method of organizing their lives. For people who are religious, there are also two more types of journaling that are really important to them. One is Bible journal. Bible journal is used to document as you're going through the scriptures, you have a thought process about something that you read, whether it's a feeling, an emotion, maybe translating part of the Bible into words that make sense to you. Bible journaling helps with that. The other religious one is a prayer journal. It doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter if you even have a religion, if you're spiritual at all. Prayer journals can be very good. Basically spilling your emotions on the things that you really feel passionate about that you would pray about. Some people have a hard time with just speaking prayer, which is totally fine because you can't tell somebody who is unable to speak that their prayers are unimportant. If you want to write out your feelings, that is absolutely just as acceptable. A gratitude journal. Most people, a lot of people, but maybe most, have a hard time with gratitude, with just saying thank you for the everyday things. I am really big about saying thank you. I get told I say thank you way too much. I don't care. As far as I am concerned, if you are willing to go out of your way to do something for me, I thank you wholeheartedly. I didn't ask you to. It's not life changing if you don't do it. You didn't have to, but you did it. So thank Thank you. Gratitude journals are, I'm very, very big on. I don't have one personally, but I do write my gratitudes in my normal journal. And I do say thank you all the time. Another one is a dream journal. A lot of people have a hard time understanding their dreams, I have recurring dreams, have recurring nightmares. Dream journals are helpful. You can kind of start to see a pattern. Our brains work in a weird and funny way that we are never going to fully understand. But some people have figured out some things that they think it might mean. By keeping a journal, you have a way to be able to go back and reflect. Maybe you find that you have a stress in your life that you didn't realize was there. You have a way to look at it and see, wow, there's really a pattern going on here. Even if you write a normal journal, you should probably put your dreams in there sometimes. Another one is a pregnancy journal. I love doing this. When I was pregnant, I did this all the time. A pregnancy journal is a way to track literally everything. It becomes like an obsession, but it's all right because you're only pregnant for nine months and you really only know you're pregnant for seven of those roughly, maybe eight if you're really, really lucky. And so it's kind of fun to just document emotion the first time you felt a kick, when you had your baby shower, when something was uncomfortable and it was kind of oddly so, when you went into labor, all of those fun things that go along with it, it's, it's fun. Reflect Reflective journal, that's one most people have. Written slash reflective journal. You go back and you just reflect. 
how did your day go? What has you excited? What has you pondering? What has you nervous? Reflecting on literally your day, week, month, year, however you journal. Try not to do it once a year. That's a little weird. You should probably be thinking about it more often than every 365 days. A travel journal. So if you like to travel, this is as close as I'm getting to a travel journal because I've been documenting the only time I've traveled this year. I'm going to be traveling to other places, just not very far away, but I'm still going to be going out and about and whatever, and I'm going to be documenting that video style, which is a type of journaling, just so you know. Travel journals are fun because you get to remember everything that you went through, right? It doesn't have to be in video form. Scrapbook, scraps and momentum style. It can be whatever style you pick. Maybe you're the artist and you have like an artist style journal and you go out and you sketch pictures of everywhere you've been. That would be awesome. And if you have one of those, I would love to see it. Another one would be time limited. Say you're starting high school or you're starting college. Create a journal that's just for that stretch of time. Or you create a journal just to document year to year. You have a journal that's just set for 365 and then it resets at the next 365. For people who are really good at time limits, it's very, very helpful. The last one that I have for you is diet and fitness journaling. This one has become near and dear to my heart. As I mentioned in my last video, I am trying to lose weight, trying to get back into shape. Just a lot has happened over the course of life that has led me from being super thin, fit, in shape, total gym monkey to where I am now. I've kind of not done much since I got back from Florida, if I'm completely honest, because life has been rough, which is why this video is so late. I apologize for this little video being so late. Seriously, I did not anticipate this, but the last two and a half, three weeks have been, we'll just sum them up as a low-key nightmare. So, I am sorry. Diet and fitness journals, to me, are absolutely a must. When creating a diet and fitness journal, you can create a spreadsheet on your computer, have just a notebook that you're tracking everything in, a physical journal, use an app. There are plenty of good ones out there. I use MyFitnessPal. I'm a big fan of that, but I also have a physical journal and I have tracking on my computer. I find that the more places I have to report to, the more accountable I feel and the harder I work. That's why I journal in so many different places, but it's not required. It really isn't. It's more that you are tracking enough so that you feel like you're making Making progress and if that is putting in your weight once a week fine if that's enough for you by all means let that be enough and if you know more please 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 comment those down below what can be a journal that's a very good question for a lot of people a lot of people feel that they have to have a formal journal there are a lot of different types of physical journals you can go with something really nice like this one that I got from a friend of mine one line a day and it goes for five years I like the one line a day thing because I'm not always really good about talking about everything that's been going on I feel like it becomes a burden when I have to take that extra time out you know, it takes away from video games <laughs> I mean that's not a lie it just, it gives me one more thing to have to think about and I just don't always want to reflect. Feeling only accountable for telling like one little thought for the day is really kind of cool. Another one would be the standard type of journal. We've all seen these, just your regular leather bound journal. Yes, I did absolutely have all of these on hand. I did not go buy a bunch of journals for this. Another one that I have that's a formal journal. Like I said, when I'm doing my diet and fitness stuff, I like to track it in a journal as well. So I have this one. I find that it's really cool because I can say, okay, well on this day I did this type of carb cycling and on this day I did this. I have enough space that I can write like if I took my measurements, what were my measurements? How did they change from the week before? And it's not numbered. If you are lazy like me and you just skip time, you can still pick up on the next date that you're on. You don't have to feel obligated to do it every single day because it's not predated. So I also have another plain journal. So this one is really, I got this one for my classroom actually because I feel like I'm going to need to be journaling when I am teaching. So I found something that was related to what I like, what I enjoy doing, things that I feel passionate about and it's for my classroom. It's cool. It's totally nerdy. It is totally chemistry. For those of you who don't know, I am a chemistry teacher. I'm an unemployed chemistry teacher working as a substitute. Don't take that to heart too much. I haven't been a teacher for very long. This is my new journal for my classroom and it'll give me a way to kind of document how things are going with my students. When I was doing my student teaching, I did have a running journal about how things were going with my students in my classroom and if we had a really good day, a really bad day. And I didn't do it every day, but on days that things stood out to me, I absolutely did. If I had a student who was especially tough to deal with, I would journal most days with that student so I could track how the student was doing in the classroom, not just how my classroom was doing in general. Things that we tried to make things better for that student or whatever. Finding a journal that is custom to your interests will definitely keep you interested longer. I recommend that, even if it means that you decorate it on your own. Speaking of decorating on your own, you can always just buy something like a spiral bound notebook. The nice thing about doing it this way is that you can decorate it to be whatever you want it to be. Decorate your journal to be custom to you. Don't make it seem like, oh, it's just another book that's in the house. And these are like super cheap. They're like a buck, maybe 
they might even be less than that especially if you go right before school starts and everything's like super discounted you can get like five of these for a couple dollars i definitely recommend picking something just as simple as that if you don't have the funds to get a nice journal because they can definitely be expensive you can do what i love to do for those of you who watched my first video you heard me say i love glitter i love glitter this is literally my journal that i use for tutoring so i do tutor pretty much all subjects this is the journal where i literally work out problems with students i find that even this is kind of a type of journaling because it lets me go back and see how I approached problems with different students when they came to me with questions. If I get another student that has the same types of questions, I can look back and say, well, what did I do with the last person who had that question? Not have to constantly rethink it. A lot of people, when they finish school, they just throw everything away. If it's something you're passionate about, don't. Create a journaling type of an idea where you can write down what you were doing. And then when you have to come back and address it potentially in the future, you have it. And this is so much better than a huge binder. Just a little book that you super duper love. And I just love this one because it's so glittery and pink. And uh, yeah, so just something simple like that. It doesn't have to be anything special. Another really good one is just on your computer. We're always on some form of digital media. You are here. You are obviously watching on some sort of a device. It gives you literally no excuse not to write your thoughts out. So if you don't want to physically write things, if that's not your thing, you're not a pencil on pen, try that again. You're not a pen on paper, pencil on paper type of a person, then type it up. You can create just a document on Google Docs, Word, have an online journal, blog it, vlog it, whatever. Just something to put out all those feelings and share what you're going through, you'd be amazed how many people actually care what you're going through and are more than happy to share their input. But you have to be willing, if you put it out there on the internet, you have got to be willing to take the ugly with it. You can't do the good and the awesome. You have to have the bad and the ugly too. I'm sorry, it's just the way it works. Honestly, anything's a journal. Notebook paper is shoved in a notebook. That's a journal if you make it a journal. It's a little tiny notepad and that's what you're gonna write on, like write your feelings on. It's a journal. If you're a tattoo type of a person, it's a journal. Your wall could be a journal. Anything that you wanna put your feelings onto it's a journal so that's all I have on journaling I know this wasn't as happy-go-lucky as the last one but it is very important to me I believe it is very important to get in touch with your feelings personally so that they're not weighing you down it isn't healthy to be stressed out all the time it just really isn't so this is a good way to put it out there especially if you're not good with talking to people I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I will see you all in the next one Bye.